right, let's get into it. Four destructive habits to avoid in your friendships. Bum, bum, bum. I know it sounds um, it sounds a little like, whoa, Spencer, it's a little dramatic. Um, I understand that. And I'm not saying that if you're listening today and you're doing one of these, all of a sudden you have no friends and your life is a mess and you can't do anything about it. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that if we're not careful you know, everything is either growing or dying. So if we're really not careful in stewarding our friendships, that is the road it leads down, you know? And unfortunately, relationships, specifically friendships that we're talking today, are so hard to come by in leadership in the Christian world. And it doesn't have to be like that. Friendships don't have to be hard to come by, but they are. And sometimes it's just just because as we get busier, as we get more motivated, more driven, we get more isolated. And that's just not the way that God intended us to be in terms of our friendships. We're meant to have friends and quality ones. And so today, I want to help you in if you have amazing friendships, keep going. If you're lacking to get better, this is a challenge. This is an encouragement. So we're just going to dive into this four destructive habits to avoid in your friendships. Number one, this is a big one, holding on to drifting friends. Ooh, this is a big one. It's a big one for me. It's probably a big one for you, but especially in the young adult stage of life, it's really hard because we will have drifting friendships in our lives. Drifting friendships is just, it's a part of it. And here's why. Our whole life has been friendship by proximity until we get to adulthood, right? If you think about it, you know, when you're a baby, obviously you don't, you know, you don't have any control over who you're hanging out with because it's your parents, right? Your parents are the friends with one another and their babies are friends. And it's like, our kids are best friends together. No choice. Then you get older and at least in my in my day, I'm not even that old, but like when I was a kid, uh, it was neighborhood friends. It was, I'm going and knocking on my neighbor's door. That was our friends because we live by them. It's proximity. It's not my choice. I'm not friends with somebody else across the city. Then as I got older, I got into sports and club sports. Again, by proximity, I'm friends with those guys. I'm friends with soccer friends. Um, I'm friends with my school friends, elementary, junior high, high school. Everything has to do with being friends with people that are around you. But then you transition out of college, out of the same, out of being forced to be in the same places as people in the same walk as life, walks of life as you. All of a sudden, it gets way, way harder to develop friends because guess what? You got to work at it. I know. Oh, it's so frustrating. You have to work at friendships when you get older, but that's just the fact about it. You got to steward them. You got to develop them. You have to be intentional with them because no longer are you just friends by association or proximity. You are friends by intentionality. But here's the good news of it. You get so much better quality friendships that way. And so number one is we hold on to drifting friends. And it's scary when you feel like a friend is drifting from you because the one thought comes in your head is what did I do wrong or what did they do wrong? There has to be blame. There has to be wrong somewhere, but that's not always the case. Sometimes when there's relationships, when somebody gets married, when somebody takes a job, when somebody is in a season where maybe they're just getting pulled away from you, maybe they move away across the country. If you that feel that friendship drifting, it's not the end of the world. Okay. It, it's sad right? Nobody likes going through those types of things, but that is a natural part of life in friendships that will go and friendships will come. But too many times we try and hold on to friendships that don't make sense anymore. And when we do that, we get hurt and we get bitter because either one side is for it and one side's not, or they both want it, but the priority isn't there. And I think that's what I've seen most of the times is two friends start drifting, right? And both of them have conversations where they want it, but both don't prioritize it. So when we get to adulthood, you have to prioritize friendships in your life. They don't just happen. And so if you have somebody that's drifting, just know that if the priority isn't there, sometimes you just have to let those friendships drift. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. If, you, if somebody walks out, not walks out willingly, like turns their back on you, but if you have people that are drifting away, different seasons of life, I promise you God is going to bring in somebody else for you because that's just how good our God is. That is just how faithful he is. That's just how much he cares about us. Is the times that I've had friends that drift, I've had better friends come in. That's just how it works, honestly. 
And that's just because I, I believe it. I pray for it. I'm intentional with it. I hope for it. And because of that, I believe God honors it. I had a, one of my best friends today is from college and he was just rando out of nowhere, my roommate, like a random roommate. And I was like, man, I don't want to be roommates with this random dude, but he turns out to be one of my best friends today. And it's just because I embraced it. We embraced it. And I didn't hold on to those high school friendships that I don't talk to them anymore or they, they don't talk to me anymore. It's just drifting friendships will kill you if you try and hold on to them. Be okay with the season that God has for you and, and move forward. Okay, number two. I hope you're getting something good out of this. If you are, leave a review, share it on Instagram, at Spencer Knock. Make sure to follow me. I would love to hear your feedback. Number two, neglecting current friends. <gasps> Ooh, okay. Transparency time. I used to be a super flaky person and I still struggle with it. And I still struggle with the fact, and I'll, I'll explain that in a little bit. But number two, you cannot neglect your current friends. God places people in our lives for specific seasons for specific reasons. And you have to be able to value the people that are in your life right now. So many times we're looking at what other people, what other friendships can we get? What connections can we get? Let's network. Let's, let's build our Instagram following. Let's build all these followings. I want to be followed by so many people. I want so many friends. The reality is you, you don't get that many friends in your life. You need true friendships. And oftentimes they're right in front of you. They're the people that are in your life. They're the people that are there side by side. And, and too many times we have our head on a swivel, kind of not appreciating what God has brought us right now. So a good thing that to do is to just take inventory. What friends do I have right now? And what am I doing to show my appreciation for them? What am I doing to foster those relationships? You know, too many times we get into a, a place where we have 50 shallow friendships when really we need five deep, close, accountable friendships. And that's just the, that's just the reality of it. So stop looking for more friends and start looking for deeper friendships. And that's really important because for me, like I said, I am somebody that I love. I'm an extrovert by nature and I love connecting with people and I love meeting new people and it's just so fun for me. Um, anytime I'm in a social event, I love meeting new people. But I have to understand what's most important to my life. And to my life, I always like to look at an in to out method. And what that means is, do I have time for my relationship with the Lord? Am I getting quality time there? Am I getting quality prayer time? Am I getting quality devotional time? If the answer is yes, then okay, that's the first, that's the first check in my spirit. Check. Okay. Then I got to ask myself, am I getting quality time with my spouse, with my wife, Adrian? Are we getting quality time together? Are we laughing together? Is it fun? Are we, are we growing with each other? Honestly, this last season with Adrian, best season of our marriage, in my, in my opinion. Best season of our marriage. We've taken so much time together. We've been growing together. It's been amazing. So, okay, cool. Check in my spirit, number two. Number three, then I go beyond my closest friendships. Are they getting enough time with me? Am I getting enough time with them? Am I talking to them enough? Am I get, being real with them enough? Am I growing our relationships? If the if that if that answer is yes, okay, cool. Now let's. I have more capacity for more friends, but too often we skip that part and we just go after more friends without having those first checks. Then we get overextended. Then we don't have time for anything in anybody in God or our spouse or our friend, our real true friends. And then also none of our relationships relationships are healthy. We get overextended, we don't have time for anything, and then all of a sudden everything starts to suffer. And what I've found is I love saying yes, but I gotta get way better at saying no. I love saying yes, yes, let's go out to dinner, yes, let's hang out, yes, let's go golfing, yes, let's play Fortnite. I'm, I say yes, 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 without even realizing that I actually have a capacity in my life and I can't say yes to everything. So what ends up happening is I say yes to too many people, then all of a sudden I have to cancel and, and that kills friendships, that kills intentionality. And what we have to do as leaders is we have to get way better at saying no, because you have to understand what your capacity is and what you are actually capable of doing and then grow from there. 
What am I capable of? It's like if you have a garden and you have a gallon of water every day to water something, you know, you're not going to plant 10 trees because they're all going to die probably. You're going to plant one flower and water that baby and let it grow. Once it grows, maybe you'll have the capacity for more. But too often we overextend ourselves because we start saying yes to too many things. And what I found in my life is I will say yes because I'm afraid of hurting someone's feelings, but that yes turns into me canceling and it actually hurts my friendships. All right? Did you catch that? I Oftentimes, I'm afraid of hurting somebody's feelings, so I say yes in the moment, but then when I have to cancel, it shows my flakiness and it ends up hurting my relationship and my friendship with them, okay? So we have to get way better at not neglecting our current friends. Be thankful for them. Invest in those relationships. All right, moving on. Where are we at? Oh, oh, we're good. We're chilling. I thought we were going along. I don't want to go too long in this podcast episode for you guys. Uh, number three is taking more than you give. This is a huge one. Nobody loves somebody that just takes. Nobody loves it. They're just exhausting. They suck. They suck to be around. They suck to be friends with. That it's like every time you hear, you get a phone call from them or a text, you're like, oh, they're just going to ask me for something. Don't be that person. Give more than you take because if you give a lot, I promise you, generosity is, inspires generosity. When I'm generous, everybody else enjoys being generous back because that's just, you love to give back to somebody that's giving to you. And re relationships are more than transactional, okay? It's not like, okay, I, I deposited this, now I expect this in return, However, there has to be, for a healthy friendship, there has to be mutual deposits and, and investments into one another. It can be a natural thing, but it definitely can't be ignored. Where it's like, if I'm just giving to a relationship and, or a friendship and I'm not getting anything in return, then I ain't having that right relationship for, or friendship for a long time, okay? Because leaders value friendships and we don't have that many people. We can't pick so many people to be in our lives, so the people, that, the people that are in our lives have to be somebody that encourages us, that we encourage. And we have this mutual relationship where it's like, hey, I'm going to give to you all I have. You give to me all you have and let's grow together. That's what close good friendship is. So make sure that we are giving <clears throat> more than we're taking. What does that look like practically? Man, when is the last time you texted one of your friends and said, hey, man, I'm pray hey, girl, hey, man, I'm praying for you. I believe in you. You're doing a great job in, in X, Y, and Z. Hey, I just want to say I'm thankful for you. Hey, let's grab lunch. When are, when's the next time that you're free? Another big thing I see in friendships is we're willing to invest on our terms. Okay? Am I getting too real here? Here? <laughs> here. Am I getting too real here? Am I getting too real here? We're willing to invest in relationships on our terms. Hey, Friday. Hey, this Friday, let's go to lunch. I can't. Okay, this Monday. Let's go to lunch because I'm basing it on my schedule. Oh, I can't. And then all of a sudden I say, wow, you've canceled. You can't hang out anytime that I want you to hang out. You're a bad friend. No, let's ask them. When is the next time that you are free? Hey, when can I open up my schedule for you? Right? We got to stop being selfish in our friendships. That's when it, we, we start to grow. We start to develop, to develop awesome friendships, relationships around us. All right, we're already on number four, guys. This is an easy one, I told you. Super practical, super easy. Number four, well, I don't know if it's easy, sorry. Preface, I don't know if it's easy, but it's worth it. Number four is this, unwillingness to grow. Oh, if you, got, if you have friendships in your life, you have to be okay to grow with one another. And growing oftentimes comes with growing pains. It comes with accountability. It comes with uh, awkward conversations. You know, I love this... Uh, <laughs> This guy I, I follow on Instagram, he said this and he goes, you should have friends in your life that you you can look at their eyes and call them an idiot and it's okay. I love that. You should have people in your life that you can look in their eyes and say, you're being an idiot and it's okay between you two and they receive it. Now there might be some arguing, but they take that advice. I'm saying you need people that you're comfortable with that corrects you, that you're not above, that you're not all high and mighty, that they can bring you down to earth and humble you and say, you're not all that and you're really acting like a jerk. You need those people in your lives, but that only comes with growth. We have to be able to grow in those relationships. If I meet random Tom, you know, in our first lunch together, I'm like, hey, you're an idiot. Super weird. 
probably never going to ask me to lunch again. He's going to be like, that guy sucks. He's a jerk. But as you grow with equity with your friends, as you grow deeper in those relationships, you can have those conversations. You can look them in the eyes and be harsh out of love and it's okay. So we have to have a willingness to grow because like I said in the very beginning, if something isn't growing, it's dying. And my heart for you guys is we would have relationships in our lives that we can grow. Come on. I, I believe that the, your ceiling is totally dependent on the, the, the quality of people in your life. I have never seen a successful person that has jerks and terrible people and toxic people all in their life. I've never seen it. I've never seen an influential Christian leader that I respect and I admire and I look at the people that they hang out with in their circle and the people around them and I go, ooh, that's not good. No, because people will build us up or people will tear us down. So today, man, those four things, holding on to drifting friends, neglecting current friends, taking more than you give, unwillingness to grow. Take an inventory, write each one down and say, okay, how am I doing good in this and how am I doing bad? Because even writing this episode, I thought to myself, how am I doing good in this? And how am I doing bad? These are checks, checks in our spirit, checks in our um, the way that we view friendships. Because again, my heart for you is that you would have awesome friendships in your life. Friendships are one of the greatest gifts that God gives us, seriously. One of the greatest treasures in your life are the people that you live life with. And we cannot overlook them. We cannot look past them for our to our ambitions, to our dreams, to our vision. No, we have to be able to take people with us, grow with them, because in the end, that is God's heart, that we would carry people and we would bring people with us to what we want to do. I hope that this episode was, uh, was helpful for you guys. I, I'm a little fired up. I don't know why. I just really believe in this series, Real Relationships. I think that in the young adult's realm, relationships and friendships are the one thing that will either catapult you or it's going to tear you down and it's going to hold you back. We have to get better at building amazing friendships. So today, take inventory, appreciate those in your life and grow with your friends. I hope that you got something out of this. Again, if you got something out of this, please write a written review on Apple Podcasts. DM me, again, at Spencer Knock. I love hearing feedback from you guys about the episodes that you watch and questions that you might have. So please, please, please DM me on Instagram. Um, tell me what you liked about the episode. Tell me, ask me questions. Tell me if you thought something wasn't good, like you have a, a critique or maybe I need to elaborate on something. I would love that for you guys. So, um, um, follow me on Instagram, reach out to me. Let's have a conversation. But besides that this week, let's continue to grow together. Let's continue to grow this podcast. Let's get it out there. I hope you have <clears throat> an amazing day and build quality relationships in your life. I'll see you next time on the future is now. Oh,